Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. We are in a race against the clock, ticking ever closer to Election Day, as Donald Trump desperately tries to delay any effort to hold him accountable for his actions. Now, at least in New York, it looks like his efforts have been unsuccessful, with a Manhattan judge ruling this week that Trump's hush money election interference trial will start on April 15th, although the ex-president continues to put up a fight attacking the judge's daughter continuously, now challenging the gag order imposed on him. We will talk about all of that tonight. And yet in the other three criminal, criminal cases against him, our legal system continues to move in slow motion. Crucially, in the most serious and most important case about Donald Trump's attempted coup leading up to January 6th. In that case, the Supreme Court has basically suspended any forward motion while they take up Trump's extremely dubious claim that he is immune from any potential prosecution because he was president at the time. Whether Donald Trump will face trial for trying to overthrow our democracy before the next election is now, let me be clear here, entirely up to the court and the majority of the court and how quickly they move. The key thing to understand and this cannot be emphasized enough, is that when the Supreme Court wants to move fast, they move fast. And when they want to move slow, they move very slow. In both circumstances, they know exactly what they're doing and what the effects will be. They're not idiots. And by they, I mean the conservative majority of the court that controls such matters. This week, we saw a stark example of that when the Supreme Court tipped the scales in the race for control of the House towards Republicans by sitting on their hands and just doing nothing. This comes in a case out of South Carolina. It may have escaped your notice. It hasn't gotten a lot of attention, where the Republican-controlled legislature in that state drew this map in 2022, drastically changing the makeup of two congressional districts, the 1st District and the 6th District. And early last year, a three-judge federal district judge court panel ruled the map was unconstitutionally racially gerrymandered, having moved over 30,000 African-American voters from the first district to the sixth. As you can see with these lines, the voting population of the first district was just 17.4% black versus 46.9% in the sixth district. Now, to be clear here, this gets confusing with the map. The purpose was to make the district safer for, yes, the Trumpy Republican incumbent Congresswoman Nancy Mace. This was a Nancy Mace salvation project. But South Carolina Republicans who found their map struck down by federal judges were not going down without a fight. Of course, they appealed to the Supreme Court asking the MAGA majority to allow their map to stand. Now, Let's be clear, this is nothing new. In fact, we've seen a lot of these fights over racially gerrymandered districts in recent years, particularly after the Supreme Court struck down sections of the Voting Rights Act. So one case was in Alabama, where that state's Republican-controlled legislature passed this congressional map in 2021. You can see just one district, the seventh in blue, was majority black. In early 2022, a federal court blocked the map ruling that it likely violated the Voting Rights Act by deliberately splitting black voters across four districts, meaning that there was only one majority-minority district. They told Alabama that wasn't good enough, that the Alabama legislature had to redraw the map with a second majority black district. Republicans took this case to the Supreme Court as well, where the court put it on pause back in 2022 saying it was, oh, too close to the election. It changed the map. We don't want to mess with things. Now, mind you, that was in February of 2022. The primary wasn't held until late May. And so what happened? Well, back in 2022, the state of Alabama used the racially gerrymandered maps with disenfranchised black voters and cost Democrats, the ones that had already been struck down by the lower court as unconstitutional, they used those maps and to no one's surprise, Republicans benefited because they won every district except the sole majority black district, helping to secure Republicans' tiny majority in the House. Now, here's the kicker. After the election was over, the Supreme Court got around to ruling on the case and ruled five to four that, oh, wow, look at that. Alabama's map did violate the Voting Rights Act and would have to be redrawn. The state of Alabama did discriminate against his black voters, and they held a whole election using the discriminatory map because the Supreme Court would not make a decision nearly four months ahead of any votes being cast. 
Okay? This happened in 2022 in Alabama. So that brings us back to South Carolina, the current litigation. In that case, the Supreme Court did actually hear arguments on that case all the way back in October. October 11th. That was more than five months ago. That was when the court heard the South Carolina case. At that point, the 2023 World Series had not yet begun. Yesterday was the opening day of the 2024 season. When the court heard the South Carolina case, George Santos, remember that guy? He was still a member of Congress. Remember, they move quickly when they want to move quickly. When they wanted to strike down COVID restrictions or end the Biden administration's moratorium on evictions or make sure that student borrowers didn't get debt relief, they moved at lightning speed. But in this case, well, they've just been sitting on this case about South Carolina's maps. No word from them, making no decisions for five months now. And the congressional primary is fast approaching on June 11th. So guess what is going to happen? We are following some breaking news at this hour. A United States Circuit Court judge has made an important ruling on the first congressional district's political boundaries. The judge has ruled that the current boundaries will be used for this year's elections. Now, the case made it all the way to the Supreme Court, where we are still waiting on a decision. Meanwhile, opponents asked a judge to hold this year's elections using the pre-2020 boundaries. The judge writes it would be highly inconvenient and unusual to try to change district boundaries ahead of the June primary. You get that? They didn't make a decision, the Supreme Court. They just ran out the clock. They just didn't do anything. And then it got so close to the election that they're going to go ahead and use the South Carolina map, the map that the lower court judges evaluated and said was racist and unconstitutional because the Supreme Court just couldn't get motivated enough to hit any deadlines and rule on the case. The Supreme Court knows what it's doing. The justices know what they're doing. These aren't freshmen in their first few weeks of college, overwhelmed by assignments, trying to figure out how to get it all done. This was not an oversight. The justices know that if they don't act, the maps stay in place. And the conservative majority knows that the current map will favor the Republican Party and that if it's changed, it will favor the Democrats. So by not acting, they have acted. By delaying, they have made something in the world happen. They think they are very clever. They think they can get away with it because no one is paying attention. But we are paying attention. We see what they're doing. We know the conservative majority of the Supreme Court decided to let black voters continue to be discriminated against in South Carolina this year in violation of the Constitution. It seems to me that this is exactly parallel to what they are right now, as I speak to you, trying to do with Donald Trump's case. They waited two whole weeks after Trump petitioned to announce that they would take the case. They then scheduled the case for the last possible day of oral arguments, April 25th. And then if they sit on it long enough, well, it could basically just go away. It could be too late to hold the trial before the election. And then... Once the issue is moot, the court could come out and rule on the merits and get credit for making the right call. He's not immune. Too late for it to really matter. Just like they did in the Alabama case after the election, after the Republicans had already secured a House majority by a very narrow number. Maybe they will do the same thing in South Carolina, too. Who knows? Find the map actually did violate the Constitution, actually was an illegal racist gerrymander after it's too late. Maybe they will find Donald Trump is not immune, but not in trying to try him before the election. <sighs> if I sound frustrated and angry, it's because I am. There's not a lot of recourse here with this court. The only recourse we have with this court is to do this, to shine a light on the behavior and make sure they know that we know exactly what they are up to. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.